You're listening to The Voluntary Life, where you can hear ideas for finding freedom in an unfree world. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to connect with the show and hear all past episodes. Here's your host, Jake. Hi, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. This episode is about entrepreneurship. I'm sharing a chapter from the audiobook of my book, Becoming an Entrepreneur. And this chapter is called Make Yourself Redundant. I think you'll find it interesting if you're interested in entrepreneurship and if you're interested in productivity generally. And if you enjoy this episode, I definitely recommend that you check out the whole book, Becoming an Entrepreneur, which you can get on Amazon as an ebook and paperback and on Audible as an audiobook. And I'll put links to those in the show notes. So without further delay, here's a chapter from my book, Becoming an Entrepreneur. Chapter 7. Make Yourself Redundant Progress isn't made by early risers. It's made by lazy men trying to find easier ways to do something. Robert A. Heinlein If your business depends on you, you don't own a business, you have a job. And it's the worst job in the world because you're working for a lunatic. Michael E. Gerber At first, I did all the same activities in my own business that I had done in my previous job, but with less pay and more stress. I was involved in every stage of the operation, which made me a single point of failure. If I wasn't there, the business stopped. I had to learn to stop being my own employee within the business and start being an entrepreneur. Employee conditioning trains you to keep yourself busy, not to be efficient. The assumption is that your job security depends on your employer giving you more and more active responsibilities in the production process. Employees are given as much work as they can take, to the point at which they can barely handle it. The Peter Principle describes this in a funny way. Every employee will rise or be promoted to his or her level of incompetence. In contrast, your fundamental objective as an entrepreneur is to make yourself redundant. This is a completely different way of looking at your role within the business. You want to lose your job within the production process as quickly as possible. This is what will make your business efficient and scalable. A successful entrepreneur is a business owner, not a business doer. The Benefits of Making Yourself Redundant True freedom as an entrepreneur comes when you extract yourself from day-to-day operations. Freedom comes from working on your business, not working in your business. You gain no freedom from starting a business if you just create a new job for yourself, working twice as hard with far more financial risk and stress. Freedom comes from getting out of the way of your business and removing its dependence on you. Once you can do that, you will be able to take advantage of the autonomy that entrepreneurship brings you, such as being location independent and enjoying your own working hours. Extracting yourself from day-to-day operations not only gives you freedom as an entrepreneur, it also allows your business to scale. Extracting yourself means creating a more efficient and scalable business through the creation of standards and procedures. Until you extract yourself, your business may grind to a halt any time you take a holiday or become ill. Ultimately, The changes that you make in order to extract yourself will become both your competitive advantage and the foundation of your business's value. When you do something efficiently, it's much harder for others to compete with you. You may also want to sell your business one day. This is only possible if you can demonstrate to a buyer that you have created an operation which can survive without you. Creating an operation that runs independently of you will also reduce the stress involved in the growth of your business. The tasks and tools that will optimize your business are also the things that will enable you to stop firefighting. This is a virtuous circle. Efficiency gains give you more profit, reduce your stress, and give you a competitive advantage, all of which allow you to pursue more efficiency gains. Let's review what you can do to remove yourself from operational dependency 
and improve the efficiency of your business. Standardization Standardization is the most basic requirement for creating an operation that is independent of the founder. The aim is to fully define your product or service, determine both the quality standards and delivery specifications. Put simply, this means deciding on one version of each product or service. You decide what you will and won't do so that you don't have to reinvent it every time you approach a new customer. Everything that you create is easily repeatable because it is so clearly defined. Standardization doesn't mean that your product never changes. The key is to have standards that everyone in the company knows, even if you keep developing and updating them. You can change product specifications as much as you like, as long as you actually have specifications in place. We did this through implementing an operations manual in the form of a wiki. This provided a great platform with which to update and develop our standards continually. Standardization also doesn't mean decreeing what you do from above. The more you achieve buy-in on the need for standards from everyone in your operation, the more intelligent your standards are going to be. Everyone who's collaborating in a venture can mutually reinforce the use of standards. By using a wiki, we enabled everyone in the business to contribute to the development of internal guidelines defining our services and quality standards. Proceduralization Whereas implementing standards means creating one version of each product, implementing procedures means creating one method of how you do each particular task. This prevents you from reinventing the wheel every time you do a task. In the case of my business, it meant creating how-to documents for all the procedures involved in our work so that we could all agree on them. We define these collaboratively on our wiki, with everyone contributing updates. Proceduralization is the key for quality control. The most basic procedure is simply a checklist of the minimum steps necessary to undertake a task properly. Procedures enable you to capture and maintain the learning that you and your team have accomplished regarding how to produce your product or service to specified quality standards. Proceduralization allows you to quickly and easily increase production of your products or services. This helps you scale your business. If you need to employ more people, they can very quickly get a clear idea of what it is that you do and how you do it, which enables them to become productive much faster. Optimization Optimization means making each of your procedures faster and more efficient. This is done by removing human physical or mental effort from a procedure. If you have a manufacturing procedure that involves physical effort, you can mechanize it by using machines to do the work instead. If you have a procedure that involves mental effort, you can automate it by using computers to do the thinking for you. In my business, we used software instead of people for as many tasks as possible. We scripted and automated our computing procedures. Many applications have associated scripting languages, which allow the user to automate any series of steps that they regularly perform within the application. For example, we used a type of database called a Geographic Information System, or GIS, that had its own scripting language. Instead of someone having to do repetitive manual tasks on a GIS, we programmed the tasks to happen automatically through a script. Mapping various analyses was simply a case of pressing a button. You can script many different types of applications and create complex automated procedures, including variables for different outcomes depending on your specific needs each time. We scripted every application that we used intensively and also developed software of our own to automate tasks. This kind of automation is available to any business that uses computers. The fundamental idea is to remove repetitive drudgery from human work and give it to machines instead. 
any time you notice a repetitive procedure, it's a signal that you should try to mechanize or automate it. There are other opportunities for optimization in things like document templates and reusable content. We made all of the documents that we produced using standard templates with automated formatting. Our reports had to explain the types of analysis that we provided, so we developed reusable content that we could simply paste in. All of these techniques involve creating faster and more efficient ways to do the things you've decided you need to do. This gives you the opportunity to produce more output with the same resources and therefore generate more profit. Knowledge Capture In designing your business, it's important to accept the fact that any employee or subcontractor may leave at any point. They might encounter more rewarding, exciting or relevant opportunities at any point, no matter what you do as an employer. Hopefully, at some point your employees will try to start businesses for themselves. It's necessary to structure your business taking this into account. This means capturing the knowledge generated by people working for you so that this knowledge is usable by others later. This idea is known as knowledge capture. The key to knowledge capture is avoiding a culture of gurus in your business. Just as you don't want your daily operations to be dependent on you as business owner, you also don't want your operations to be dependent on any single person. If a guru leaves and takes all their knowledge with them, then you have a real problem. You have to try and work out what on earth that person was doing and rebuild the capability without them. You can avoid the guru syndrome by getting people to record their knowledge systematically in a form that others can use. This is an integral element of both standardization and proceduralization. If it's part of your company culture that all knowledge is clearly recorded and shared, then the standards and procedures are in place for new employees. For example, it's important that IT systems administrators record and share exactly how they are managing your IT systems. That way, if a sysadmin leaves, a new one can see what's been done and get a handle on everything quickly. To facilitate such transitions, we devoted many pages of our internal wiki to describing our IT systems in depth. Even if you have highly skilled employees who are doing things that you don't completely understand, you can still capture the knowledge so that if they leave, you can continue scaling. In this way, you can replace people who leave without losing a whole chunk of business knowledge along with them. Doing the right things One of the traps of optimization is doing senseless tasks more efficiently. It's important not to waste time optimizing activities that are not helping your business. As the famous management consultant Peter Drucker said, there is nothing so useless as doing efficiently that which should not be done at all. Effective optimization takes place at the level of the business as a whole, not just individual activities. Rather than improving the efficiency of something you shouldn't be doing, it's better to stop doing it and redirect resources to something more effective or more profitable in the long term. A vital part of entrepreneurship is the process of creative destruction. Identifying products and services that don't have a future. The question is, should you really be doing what you're doing? If necessary, you may have to adjust your activities in order to better fulfill your vision for the business in a way that customers will pay for. This involves taking a step back to ensure that you should be doing any particular activity before investing the time and effort to make it more efficient. Big corporations find it particularly hard to change their operations because they have built up significant momentum and scale. You have a real advantage as a startup entrepreneur because you have the flexibility that goes with smaller organizations. Take advantage of this flexibility and get rid of any unnecessary activities as early as possible. The market will force you to make these tough decisions sooner or later anyway, and the adjustment will be much harder if it is not at a time of your choosing. 
optimization of your business is intimately related to the learning by selling approach discussed in chapter 4. If a procedure results in a product or service that nobody will pay for, the optimal choice is to stop doing it and put your energy into something else instead. In my case, that meant stopping the development of an online software application when I learned that our clients actually wanted consultancy services. Optimization makes a better world. Here are the three most important things to remember about making yourself redundant. 1. Extracting yourself from day-to-day -day operations is essential to your own freedom as an entrepreneur. It is also what allows your business to scale. 2. There are three steps to extracting yourself. Standardizing your product, creating procedures for all your operations, and optimizing those procedures, for example by using mechanization or automation whenever you see a repetitive process. 3. Be careful not to waste time optimizing ultimately senseless activities. It's better to eliminate an activity as soon as you realize that it is commercially unsustainable rather than waiting until the market forces you to. Through business optimization, entrepreneurs make the world a better place. This is how economic development happens inside individual firms driven by business owners. Our lives are improved by the creation of more with less. To see an entrepreneur increasing the efficiency of a business is to see, on a micro scale, how increases in the overall standard of living actually happen. In pursuit of optimization, entrepreneurs eliminate repetitive drudgery that people previously had to do. It's one of the most constructive incentives of entrepreneurship. You identify repetitive chores and find ways to get them done more efficiently by a machine instead. This frees up your people and empowers them to focus on what people do best, creative thinking. Thank you for listening to The Voluntary Life. If you like this podcast, please show your support by becoming a patron of The Voluntary Life on Patreon. Your support will help to grow and improve the show, and you'll get access to a treasure trove of rewards, including bonus episodes. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to learn more.